I had a, an epiphany in here yesterday that I'd like to share with you, if you don't mind. I realised I'm a Moscow. I hadn't realised it till yesterday and somebody mentioned Moscow. This is what we do. We go on sites, as Stephen said, this is practical models now we'd like to share with you. That we go on new developments, we put in all of the infrastructure, it's one person to deal with a one-stop shop. And it includes some quite innovative ESCO models that we've got happening now, contact structures there, uh, they're in place. So I'll cover off some of that. I think the journey started for us with gas, that we started putting gas networks in uh, and owning them under, under deregulation, so we're off-gen regulated. Then we added electric, then we added water. We can't quite do water in, in Scotland yet, but the rest of the UK we, we do water and wastewater. Then we added fibre to the home, which gives everyone at least three, uh, 300 megabytes per second open access network, phenomenal. And we thought we cracked it then. About five years ago, people started to say, well, would there be no gas? We said, don't be stupid, there'll be gas forever. No, no, there'll be no gas. Districts heat since come in ESCOs. I had to look up what ESCO was in a dictionary. It was before the internet, I think. And, and suddenly it was, there's going to be no gas, there's going to be districts heating. Then the UK stalled because uh, recession and zero carbon was suddenly code five, not code six, and everyone hesitated. London didn't, to be fair. The London plan supports district heating. We go to talk to new developers uh, and regeneration people in London, and it's district heating full stop. Outside of London, ooh, we still like to put gas in, even on sites of 5,000 homes. Gas networks, fossil fuel are still being put in today. We're okay with that. We, we fund gas networks. We, we still support them. However, this is long term now, and we offer district heating instead. Scotland now has got that focus without doubt that we're involved in a site in Aberdeen, 5,000 plots, where gas is going on the first 250 plots, but then it will be district heating, which is wonderful. People have talked about this is the responsibility of many, and very much now want to just share our models of what we're doing. We are part of Brookfield. Uh, Brookfield at a big company, we invest in owning infrastructure. We love to own pipes, cables, substations, the hardware. We're not particularly a supplier, we love to be a distributor. Huge, but in the UK, we brought for utilities. We have a few brands, one does gas meters, one does specialist electric substations, primary substations. There's us in Metropolitan and GTC that do traditional housing sites and now do water, fiber as well as gas electric. But Metropolitan, we look at big specialist sites, and I'm going to come on to three examples. We love to own networks. We're now moving into retrofit, so we're very interested in the retrofit market. We've started to talk to Scottish Futures about the Glasgow and Edinburgh and models there with, with uh, ESCO structures that I'll come to now. We've got 22,000 sites already in the UK that have 1.4 million connected properties. This is mature stuff. A lot of gas, quite a bit of electric, lots of fibre now, water, and now district heating. Our model, there's a site. It needs on-site infrastructure. You see the beauty of this now, it's one-stop shop. People refer to it as Moscow. So instead of dealing with the statutory utility companies, one at a time, you can deal with one person, one project manager, it'd work for me and would put all of the on-site infrastructure cables, everything in, right up to the buildings, right up to the meter positions. There's huge synergies, efficiencies in design and in installation, massive. You can plan a long-term strategic uh, uh, solution for your site. Most of what we do is regulated. We cannot do water just yet in Scotland. Uh, we've got some thoughts on that, but elsewhere we can do everything, the one-stop shop. You need an ESCO, so we'll do all that. We'll set the ESCO up, we'll manage it, we'll design and build it, O&M it, we'll do all of that. And it comes to the innovative models for ownership. And you'll need off-site connections to the off-site grids. We manage all that. So it truly is a one-stop shop. And we're doing it day in, day out. We do up to 2,000 new property connections a week. Might be electric, water, fibre, but we're doing them. There's King's Cross. You've got St Pancras on the left and you've got King's Cross Station. So it's the bit in the back. I've spoken about this before. It's two and a half thousand homes, five million square feet of commercial. 
We, it's a unique job, it's the only one I know of. We own the electric, the water, the wastewater, the fibre, the district heating, the gas the energy centre, even the gas meter in the energy centre. And it saves 50% carbon on what would have been normal. Again, the London plan, positive, strong planning. It must be, it's not choice. You must reduce carbon. You must do district heating. No messing then, it's done. It's in operation now. We have 132 kV connection off uh, UK Power Networks, then we own the electric infrastructure. We have a bulk water connection off Thames, a bulk sewer discharge to Thames. We own the infrastructure. We own the fibre network to every single property. It's open access, there's choice. Again, first. And we own the district seating. An interesting point on here, Argent own the ESCO. The developer owns the ESCO. We fully manage it for him. We do the day-to-day, -day, the 24-7 phone calls, the heat metering, the billing. They're the majority shareholder. We have a minority share in it. I'm on the board with three of the, guy, the guys from the developer. They control the heat price. They don't run that to make profit. They don't want to lose money out of it, but it's there as a means to an end. So assure people moving on site, bills will be reasonable. We'll come back to that thought in two seconds. Uh, because that leads to a not-for-profit structure for an ESCO, which is interesting from a, a local authority perspective. We're now taking that to the next stage. This is a real showcase of what you can do. You have a heat network. You can then change the fuel source. We plan three 2 megawatt CHP engines. We've got two in. We're now going to put a one and a half megawatt fuel cell in there, which uh, Rob's with us. We've got a stand upstairs. You can come and talk to us. But Rob's very excited about the benefit of the carbon on that. It takes us from about a four to a five and a bit, cold four to a cold five and a bit, just by putting a fuel cell in there. Fantastic. We're going to do bio-oil boilers, and the view that we'll eventually swap one of the original gas CHP engines to bio-oil. So that, that ev evolution, there's PV on site as well, which plays a role, but, but not much. It's more of a token effort there, to be fair. And the other big one we're doing is a 13 megawatt cooling set station is now being added. So it's true uh, tri generation. It's a fantastic uh, one we, we, we're really proud of. But again, get your heat network in, get the footprints in place, get strong planning, and it's there. You can then change your fuel sources and evolve. Another example Greenwich Millennium Village, 1750, high density. We're doing everything there as well. One partner, one project manager, extend the networks, plug in buildings in as you go. Long build out, 15 years, no problem. Proud to work with Eon on that one. The Eon on the energy centre, we on the heat network. This is the electric model, this. Supply, generation, distribution, we are the distributor. On site, one person still with to plug your buildings in and extend. But Eon's name on the heat bill for end customers. People pay them the heat bill, they pay us a use of system. We're doing that model in the, in the site in Aberdeen where E.ON will be the energy centre and will be electric and heat on that site. Fibre goes into every single home and gives 300 megabytes per second. You get free Sky TV as well for a year. Sky are going to come on board to do voice and data over the fibre network as well. There'll be no satellites on the site, just one single satellite for all of the TV going in at the moment and in time that can disappear as TV will come round. We talked yesterday, if people were here then, about getting all your data sources and tying things together. You appreciate what you've got there. You've got the bones of a smart city, a small one, but King's Cross a bit bigger, where it's hardwired. You've got all your smart meters for water, heat, electric, gas, district heating, and a fiber network that can link them, data protection allowing. <laughs> Businesses get a gigabyte per second. None of the contention issues and choice of supplier. If there's any product, the fibre is, is mind-blowing. Someone moving in saying, wow, it saves 50% carbon. Behaviours have to change and people have to appreciate that. The fibre, when they can use every product in the house, every app at the same time, is the one that blows, blows the mind. The red line that you can just vaguely see is, is an eco town in Bista, becoming a garden city. We've been involved a long time with a railway line through the middle. We have about 5,000 homes. This one's low density. And the plan we've got there is a primary electric sub in the middle, and then we'll build it out. 
again, fibre to everyone. There are complaints in that area on new developments that people are getting less than a megabyte, not one of our sites. They're getting less than a megabyte. On our site, they'll have 300 megabytes per second each. It, it really is a phenomenal one. Water, wastewater, we do all those. The, the, the heat is interesting. That it's going to develop in four different modules, and we just land an energy centre off the back of a, a, a crane. Uh, it plugs into a heat network. We'll put a plastic local heat network in quick for the first phase and build up four different phases of a heat network, and then we'll link it together with the steel network, the big steel network. It's a great way, or they could freeze, they could just stop as individual phases, they could link up. New build can be the catalyst for regeneration. King's Cross people are coming and saying, can we please extend outside? And the planning encourages them to do that is the key thing there. And to finish the story down based there, there's a separate energy from waste plant three mile away across the fields, waiting for someone to come and say, where can I plug this heat pipe? Because they've got more than enough heat for the whole of Vista. And we'd love to do that. But a real great model there of the heat being you that the heat being used to generate electric, uh, sorry, waste being used to generate electric and spare heat, then feeding all the homes. The model, we own everything on the site and it plugs into our ops business and people deal with us. Regulated networks, so it's no different than if the host utility companies were there. But then we build it no profit because we want long term revenue streams, we don't want profit on the build. And we bring investment from the long-term use of system to give best value for developers. So it really is, it's a one-stop shop, but we're proud of the fact that value-wise, because we bring investment from every single network we'll own, we can drop the price. And the ESCO, the ESCO sits there in the middle. It needs a bit of O&M, operational maintenance. It needs fuel coming in. It sells electrics to the grid as a revenue stream. And then in our model, there's the ESCO at the top. We own the heat network and get a use of system. So that ESCO in King's Cross is owned by Argent. It's a unique feature this. We fully uh, operate it, fully manage the ESCO. It owns the energy centre. And then options are, we'll invest in the ESCO if nobody else wants to. We'll quite happily stand forward. Brookfield own heat networks in Toronto, Chicago, and now want to invest in the UK, which is great for us. Developers, local authorities, we talked to some local authorities about a model where we will operate the ESCO and they'll do a not-for-profit ESCO. You have the best heat prices anywhere then. Tie it to an energy from waste source, you could give 25-year guarantee on heat price, which is fantastic. So we offer the opportunity on regeneration projects for local authorities to keep control. We can fully manage it, do all of the work, bring the expertise, put the plant and the pipe in and possibly other utilities. Community not-for-profit. For end customers, it's critical that performance and price is there, and we're part, we've been proud to be involved in the uh, independent community heat protection scheme that Rebecca's been instrumental in, and all our models support that. It's the same as a regulated utility model to give guaranteed standards. So that's already in place on our models, and we give a price assurance as well for customers. They'll never be worse than, than if they had their own gas boiler in place, plus a little discount. To finish off, uh, we talked about partnership, joining in and support, and, and private public coming together, and that, that's critical. Between us, we can crack this. It's one hell of a challenge, but it, it's achievable. And over in, uh, in, in King's Cross, the, the famous Pink Panther engine there, the first CHP engine there was coloured pink for some reason. And uh, we ended up doing a bike ride for, for breast cancer from where it was made in Yen back all the way. And when that plan was put to me, I said, don't be crazy, how far? 760 mile, any hills in the way, just the Alps. And I said, you've got no chance. And there we were, it's a few years ago, I'm on, on the right on old blue, my bike that's now dead. Uh, and, and that was Argent there. There were people from uh, General Electric and uh, there were people from the Metropolitan team. So these long-term partnerships, they, 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 they are fascinating when they come together and like-minded people work together. And that's me finished. Thank you very much.